right now. The First Lady of the United States set to arrive in the Alamo City. This is a live look at Lackland Air Force Base where her plane is set to land just any moment now. Dr. Jill Biden is in town to speak at the Latinx Inclusion Luncheon. It's part of the Unidos U.S. Annual Conference. The yearly event aims to bring people together to discuss issues on housing, health, racial equity, and education. Today's the first time the conference will be held in person since the pandemic started. The Texas panel on investigating the massacre at Robb Elementary is in executive session right now. One of the people expected to testify today, the Uvalde County Sheriff Ruben Nolasco. He will participate through video teleconference. Originally, he refused to do so and then changed his mind after being issued an official notice. Security video from inside Robb Elementary in Uvalde could also be released today. It is over an hour of footage showing what happened before officers entered the classroom that day. The video is from inside the hallway of the school and will have no audio. Texas DPS officials released a letter supporting the release of the video, saying it won't harm their investigation. Uvalde's mayor also put out a statement supporting the release of the video, saying it will likely bring clarity to the public and families of the victims. A reminder today that ERCOT is urging everyone to conserve energy this afternoon. That's because we're expected to see extreme record-breaking temperatures once again. ERCOT asking people and businesses to voluntarily conserve electricity between 2 this afternoon and 8 tonight. It says no system-wide outages are expected. However, we'll cut it pretty close. Some ways to conserve energy include turning up your thermostat a few degrees, or you can turn off lights and unplug appliances that you are not using. Outside with live cam, not very often we get to 100 degrees right off the bat when we start the noon show, but we are knocking on the door. Yeah, we're right there. I mean, you see the clear skies out there. Yesterday at this time, we were at 97. That's where we are now. So we're right on pace with yesterday, and I, I think we could get a degree or two warmer, if you can believe that, this afternoon. I want to show you the temperatures right now because these numbers are important. 97 here in San Antonio, but it feels like 101. When you factor in that humidity, I know you see curve up there. It looks like the heat index is at 111. I think that's probably inaccurate, uh, but I wouldn't be surprised if the heat index is above 100 there. Hondo, it feels like 103. New Braunfels, it feels like 105 at this hour, and it only gets worse from here. KSAT 12 hour forecast 105 by 3 o'clock. Now we will start to see a little bit more cloud cover as we get into the afternoon and evening hours. And like yesterday, there is a potential for some pop up downpours. We get as high as 107 this afternoon. Heat index will be 109, maybe 110 in a few spots. 20% chance of rain through about 8 o'clock, and then the rain chances go away and we see things clear out tonight. But still in the 90s, even at 11 p.m. I mean, things just don't cool down much at all. Excessive heat warnings are in effect. Heat advisories basically the entire area. And again, that means that temperatures will be anywhere from 105 to 110. Heat index up to 112, potentially in some isolated spots. I think here in San Antonio, again, more on the order of 109 to uh, 110 at the peak. So we just talked about ERCOT. We're going to have more on that coming up, plus how long this heat lasts. And we'll have a look at the rain chances, too, coming up a little bit later today. That's uh, in just a few minutes, guys. Dangerous heat. Thank you so much, Justin. Now to the latest on the coronavirus. Scientists are tracking a subvariant of Omicron that is the most transmissible yet and already dominant in the U.S. Three quarters of Americans are living in counties with medium or high risk of COVID. ABC's Rena Roy has the latest. As the U.S. continues its battle against COVID-19, scientists are trying to keep up with new variants infecting Americans. The Omicron subvariant BA5 is now the most transmissible yet, accounting for more than half of new cases nationwide. Moderna announcing an updated vaccine that appears to produce more neutralizing antibodies against all variants, including BA5, compared to its current vaccine. The company planning to submit its data to the FDA this week. Week. Right now in the U.S., we're averaging about 100,000 new cases a day, and nearly 300 people are reported lost to the virus each day. In New York City, new cases are up more than 25 percent in the last two weeks. Officials recommending masking up indoors once again, with experts saying 
previous infection does not guarantee protection. You could theoretically be infected with multiple Omicron subvariants. California battling a positivity rate second only to the state's Omicron peak last winter. And experts think actual case numbers could be much higher because many are testing at home and not reporting those results. And now scientists are keeping an eye on another new subvariant of Omicron called BA 2.75. Just two cases have been detected in the U.S. And while it's too soon to say whether it will become dominant across the country, it has some mutations that are concerning to scientists. The mutations in Omicron BA5's spike protein give it the ability to be incredibly infectious and escape antibodies. And Omicron BA2.75 has even more mutations. With 67% of the country fully vaccinated, hospitalizations are just a quarter of what they were in January at the peak of Omicron, but still 71 million Americans haven't received a single shot. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. Right now on KSAT.com, a pair of former San Antonio police officers indicted late last year on charges of aggravated assault by a public servant face another hurdle to reinstatement. This comes after both received additional indefinite suspensions. Carlos Castro and Thomas Villarreal were indicted by a Bear County grand jury in December. That's nearly two years after investigators accused them of kicking in a door and beating a suspect wanted on suspicion of evading arrest and possession of a controlled substance. Court records show both defendants are free on bond awaiting trial. According to city records, Castro and Villarreal have both appealed their latest terminations to a third party arbitrator. A burglary suspect still free this noon. However, the Bear County Sheriff's Office is trying to change that. BCSO shared a video on Facebook showing a man with a bandana on his face walking around an automotive shop where tools, four catalytic converters, and a truck were stolen. This was back in June in Far East Bear County. During their investigation, deputies discovered that the suspect had entered through a hole in a fence that surrounds the building. You can get a closer look at this video on KSAT.com. And this noon, police are still working to solve a murder case about a year after someone shot and killed a man. Police say back on July 1st of last year, they were called to the Alamo Estates Apartments on Midcount Drive near Walsham Road, just outside of Loop 410. That's where officers found the body of Raymond Sneed with a gunshot wound. Officers haven't arrested anyone. However, police say one witness recalled a woman leaving those apartments around the time of the shooting. If you have any information that can lead to arrests in this case, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. You could receive a reward of up to $5,000. Well, as you start your work week, you might notice some roadways are closed off. Traffic Authority Stephen Cavazos has a look at the potential roadblocks and how to get around them. As the month of July continues, we continue to see that work taking place around the Alamo City. Let's go ahead and start here off Loop 1604 on the northwest side of San Antonio. Barrier setting that is taking place. All right, this started on Tuesday, July 5th, should be wrapping on Friday, July 15th. This is for our overnight commuters, or maybe those early bird commuters, 9 in the evening until 5 in the morning. That's when you can expect alternating eastbound main lane closures from Bandera Road to I-10. So make sure you plan ahead there, but we're going to see some work for our friends over here, our neighbors in Guadalupe County off State Highway 123 guardrail repairs. This is going to start July 11th and wrap on Thursday, July 14th, 7 in the morning until 5 in the afternoon. And it's during that time, single lane closures in both directions from State Highway 46 to FM 477. So let's go ahead and take one final drive over here to US 90 in Bear County where we see some guardrail repairs. This is a pretty busy spot, so make sure you plan ahead because we're going to see that work last until July July 15th, that's Friday, 9 in the morning until 5 in the afternoon, alternating main lane and ramp closures in both directions right there at Montgomery Road. But of course, there's plenty other of work, plenty other work taking place around the Alamo City. Grab those phones and open your camera app. You can scan that QR code that will take you directly to the KSAT traffic page and that has a list of all the closures taking place in your area and of course anything else that could impact your drive time. Well, if you are looking for a new gig, here's your chance to snag a position. Comel ISD is hosting a summer job fair today. The district is looking to fill a number of positions in several departments, including technology and transportation. It's also looking for teachers, substitutes, and custodial staff. It's happening today from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. in New Braunfels at the district's support services building. That address is 1404 I-35 North. Now, if you're interested but can't make it today, the district will hold another job fair 
on August 4th. Still coming up this half hour, the Spurs are learning a lot about one of their top draft picks after two losses in the Summer League. More on that in a few minutes in sports. Well, there is a special program in the Texas Hill Country that aims to let everyone enjoy the outdoors during summertime. It's called Children's Association for Maximum Potential, or CAMP. Max Massey gives us an inside look at how all the CAMP's programs are intentionally designed for individuals with conditions or disabilities. Archery, even though I really don't have a straight shot, I just like how exhilarating it is. Meet 22-year-old Kalen. He's a brain tumor survivor, and this is his fifth time at camp. One of the things that um, happens many times um, for folks who've been through treatment is that just because treatment has finished doesn't mean that there aren't lingering effects. And this is Dr. Brandon Briery, who's been with Camp Camp for 15 years. Their needs and challenges don't go away, and we feel like camp shouldn't go away either. Camp provides recreational opportunities for individuals with medical conditions or disabilities, as well as their siblings. And while they're meeting all these new friends, they are also having this opportunity to uh, do things that they don't get to do anywhere else, like ride on a horse or, or float in a canoe or uh, swim in a pool. Right now, camp sees hundreds and hundreds of campers each and every year. The need in our community is great. Uh, we um, know that there are thousands of individuals living with disabilities and medical conditions in the greater San Antonio area. The idea is that everyone, regardless of health, disability or anything, they deserve an opportunity to be a part of a community where they're celebrated, a place to grow independence and grow confidence. Camp gives them an opportunity to come and be with their peers, to meet people who are, um, you know, going through similar challenges in life who um, get it. Camp is always looking to expand and they always need more volunteers. If you're interested in helping out, we have a link to do so right now. Just head to KSAT.com. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. Got a feeling if those kids are outside, they're in that pool. Exactly. You would have to be today. It's such dangerous heat, Justin. It is. Uh, we dealt with this yesterday. We're going to be right back where we were yesterday, if not a degree or two above that. And we have humidity to boot. So, yes, it is dangerous uh, heat. We have the excessive heat warnings in place. The aquifer, well, it's coming down some half a foot, 634.5. That's what we want to see. Uh, the rain I thought yesterday might have helped some. It doesn't appear to have helped the aquifer much. Molds are low at 490. We're going to talk about this heat and where we stand with ERCOT coming up. Seems like every day since May we've been saying this is one of those days you really got to pay attention and this is one of those days that you really got to pay attention. The most so far I feel like I thought we couldn't top yesterday and yeah. here we are. Well yeah, it's going to be a close call. I think we'll probably be right around where we were yesterday and the, the concern now becomes what about energy usage? Uh, ERCOT of course put out the warning today that they're asking folks to conserve energy between 2 and 8 p.m. So let's look at the graph here. This is their latest graph showing uh, where we are as far as supply and demand. So that blue line represents demand, at least that's the forecast demand. So this is where we are currently. You can see we're starting to arc up here. And then you have the forecast demand, which according to their graph goes right above the supply for at least a little bit. Uh, so therein lies the concern. Now they are saying they have enough energy to cover this. Uh, there's no widespread outages expected, so we'll see how this plays out, but they are asking people to conserve energy again between 2 and 8 p.m. today uh, to help the situation a little bit. It has been hot. There's no doubt about it. We got up to 106 yesterday. Uh, today we are forecasting to be up above 100 and probably that will be the case for the next two days. We are projecting that we will see 13 days in a row of 100 or above. 
That would rank third all time on our list here. We've been breaking records left and right. We could show you a ton of these type graphics where we're just breaking records, but this is one of them and we're putting together a pretty significant string of triple digit heat. Now yesterday we got a little bit of relief from some showers and storms that developed to our north. Notice we're just now starting to get some of those clouds going. Pretty similar situation today where I think we'll get some development up here in the hill country. Some of that works out towards San Antonio by the late afternoon and evening hours. But not before we see those temperatures really skyrocket and we're already there. 97 in San Antonio. No, it is not 121 in Divine. That number is not correct. But 100 Castroville, 99 Rio Medina, 95 Bernie Stage. It is only noontime and we're already starting to see a few triple digits out there. Pretty impressive. Not only that, we've got two points in the 60s, so that's contributing to a heat index. This is your feels like number. And if you're outside right now, it feels like 106 in Boulevard. It feels like 104 Canyon Lake, 105 in New Braunfels. Comfort the heat index up above 100, 102 at Stinson. You get the idea, and these numbers are only going to get worse as time wears on here. We go outside for you, and we've got 97 at the airport and at Stinson and at Kelly. Randolph is at 96. Pretty light winds, so there's not much of a breeze to cool you down. In the case that 12 hour forecast, 105 at 3 o'clock, 106 at 4 p.m., 107. The forecast died at 5 o'clock. We will put in that 20% chance of rain. We'll keep that through about 8 o'clock before rain chances go away. But these temperatures still above 90 at 11 p.m. with mostly clear skies. Here's the forecast. And the computer model does show about a 20% chance of rain by this afternoon and then dying down at 8 o'clock. Again, tomorrow, similar setup with some isolated showers and storms. So lucky few will get some rain. Most of us stay dry, but if you're lucky enough to get underneath one of these storms, gusty winds, some pretty heavy rain. Uh, won't last all that long, though. Uh, very quickly, we got to look into the tropics because we do have a potentially developing system here. Hurricane Center is watching this little piece of energy coming off of Florida, and this is going to drift west. 30% chance of development over the next five days. It'll be slow development, but the latest computer models kind of have this drifting west. High pressure is still going to control our forecast. It does move west a little bit, but the system doesn't get pulled into Texas. In fact, it drifts north into Louisiana. At least that's the latest thinking, which will keep a lot of the moisture away from us, unfortunately. There may be just enough moisture to get some isolated showers and storms going today and tomorrow, but on Thursday as well, that's a day we'll be watching. And maybe with some added moisture, a little bit of cloud cover, we stay below 100. Otherwise, Rest of the forecast includes uh, triple digits, but not as hot as today. I think today is our peak heat, guys. Lovely. Well, if you got rain yesterday and you get it today, buy a lottery ticket. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yep. That would be amazing. Thanks, Justin. Spurs fumble away a chance at a win, but another impressive showing from a rookie. Coming up. Hey, you know, it's not really about wins and losses. It's about seeing what you have as far as talent goes during the summer league. Good thing. Spurs are 0-2. But their young guys are getting some good work and coming off a loss to Cleveland, taking on Golden State last night. Blake Wesley, the 25th overall, had 20 in the first game. Followed that up last night. First quarter, you see he got the step back three. And he had five of the Spurs' first seven. A few plays later, Joshua Primo. That's pretty good. San Antonio led 13-11. Darius Days muscles his way to the basket. And then there's another basket for the Spurs. They trail 24-23 after one second quarter. Primo finds the 20th overall pick. Malik Brennan for a three. That was that was a what? And then there's Davis. San Antonio up by six. Days in the half with another three. San Antonio hit seven threes in the first half. They outscored Golden State 25-10 in the second. They led 48-34 at the break. We go to the third quarter. Wesley takes control of the game again, this time with the jumper. San Antonio up 54-38. The Warriors start to rally behind Jonathan Kumunga. Cut the deficit down to seven heading into the fourth quarter. Gold State keeps it going. Mac McClung, the former Texas Tech Red Raider with the crowd pleaser. Nice reverse. We're all tied up at 74. Two minutes to play. The Spurs find themselves down four. Wesley steps up again. Back-to-back -back transition three-pointers. His second one gives the San Antonio Spurs a lead back 85-83. He finished with a game-high 22, but the Warriors take the lead on his free throw from Kaminga with eight seconds left. The Spurs at the other end, they got a chance, but nah, fumbled it away. That's how that one ends. Once again, Wesley did lead the Spurs with 22. The final 
San Antonio loses by one 86 85. They're now 0 and 2 in summer league play. So how did they feel going to get some of the Warriors regular bench players low like Wiseman and Jonathan Kuminga? Oh, it was actually fun, you know, seeing those guys on TV, you know, being out there on the court with them at the same time, you know, it's, it's, it really was cool, but, you know, we all play basketball, we got to be, we got to compete, so, you know, they came out on top, you know, we, there's some things that we could have cleaned up, but, you know, we're going we to we shake back and get back next time. It's guys like that where you want to compete against, you want to prove yourself, you want to show that you can contain them and give them problems too. We're trying to learn how to win, uh, we got a lot of young guys here, so games like that, uh, you know, you never want to lose close games, but they teach you how to win. See, this is why this is good for these young guys. To, this is how they get used to the NBA back-to-back -back games. They play yesterday, and they get to play again tonight at 6 o'clock against the Rockets. And then they'll wrap it up Thursday against the Hawks. But enjoy that back-to-back. -back. Let's figure those. Get them ready well. for that. Yeah. And only by one point. Not bad. Yeah. All right, across the country, businesses are looking for help. They don't have enough workers. So with millions of job openings, anyone looking for a new gig has their pick. So where can you find the best pay? We have a look in the next half hour. And of course, here in South Texas, we know about those scorching temperatures all too well. Justin just got through informing us about 107 today. While you're probably remembering to stay hydrated, don't forget some medications don't mix well with extreme heat either. How to keep yourself safe coming up after the break. New today at five, ready, set, shop. Amazon's Prime Day, which is actually two days, starts tomorrow. And competing retailers are joining in on the summer sales action too. With so many discounts and lightning deals, it can be easy to overdo. So on 12 on your side, Marilyn Moritz has a few shopping strategies from the experts to help you separate the hype from the real deals. That's coming up today at five after Entertainment Tonight. Temperatures continue to soar for millions of Americans, but certain medications can actually make the heat even more dangerous. CNN's Mandy Gaither has more on the sun-related side effects of certain medicines and how to protect yourself. A heat wave continues to crash over much of the U.S., and mixing those soaring temperatures with some medications could cause major problems. Sometimes the reaction may take uh, weeks to months uh, for it to fade. Dr. Reza Conroy with the Ohio State University Wexner Medical Center says some medications that don't go well with the sun include some antibiotics, antidepressants, antihistamines, anti-inflammatories, and medications for blood pressure and diabetes. For diabetics, Conroy says bring a cooler when you're out as heat can degrade insulin and other medicines. Put the medication, especially insulin, in the cooler and keep it nice, cool, and dark. Conroy says sun-related side effects of medications usually develop about 24 to 72 hours after sun exposure and may appear to be an exaggerated sunburn. It looks red, sometimes scaly, sometimes itchy, and sometimes when it's really bad, blisters and spots that resemble hives. When possible, Conroy says to take the medicine before bed instead of in the morning and follow the sun smart steps, slip on clothing that covers the body, slop on SPF 15 to 30 or higher broad spectrum water resistant sunscreen, slap on a hat, seek shade and avoid the sun between 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. and slide on sunglasses with UV protection and side panels. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. Some a lot of people may not think about is how those medications can affect you. Yeah, you that's a really good point. So many things, especially yeah. when it's this hot. I mean, looking at the 107 possibility. Yeah, uh, up above 105 for sure this afternoon. You can see there in the background, if you were looking at live cam, you could see some clouds way off in the distance. My hope is that those clouds will gather some, work their way in our direction, and maybe we'll get some more of those downpours today, at least a few. We are now at 32 days this year, 100 degrees or above. And we are working our way towards the records very quickly. We are way ahead of pace. Keep in mind, it is only mid-July. We still got to get to August and even parts of September have supplied us with plenty of triple digit heat. So we've got a long way to go here. 97 degrees at the airport. Feels like 101. Feels like 105 in New Braunfels. Feels like 103 in Hondo. Feels like 100 in Kerrville. The heat index values pretty much are above 100 area wide at this hour. 
Here are the forecast temperatures. We're going to go with 107 here in San Antonio, Elmendorf 107. Places like Divine can be as high as 108. You see some of these cooler numbers here, and that's because this computer model is seeing some showers and storms developing in this area by 5 o'clock, which would cool temperatures. Hopefully that's the case. Uh, but those are the those are the five o'clock numbers that we are forecasting this afternoon. That's going to prompt that heat advisory. It's already in effect. It's going to go through 7 p.m. tonight. Excessive heat warnings in effect too, and these may carry over into tomorrow. We're still looking at some big time heat, but not as hot as today. And hopefully that trend, that quote unquote cooling trend, continues. We look at that forecast coming up here in just a few minutes, guys. Thank you, Justin. Novavax is a step closer to offering its COVID vaccine in the U.S. The U.S. government has made a deal to secure more than 3 million doses of the vaccine. That's on condition the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention recommends the vaccine's use and it gets FDA emergency use authorization. If it does clear those hurdles, it would become available for free. While it doesn't have an emergency use authorization, last month the FDA's vaccine committee voted to recommend it for authorization for people 18 and up. Novavax takes a more traditional protein-based approach than the currently approved COVID vaccines here in the U.S. Well, more drivers may start to see a dip in gas prices. The national average for a gallon of self-serve regular is now $4.68. That's according to AAA. That's about 30 cents lower than gas prices from last month. The lower cost comes after oil prices fell. Some of the cheapest gas in, is in South Carolina, where it's $4.18, and the priciest is in California. People there are still paying nearly $6.09 per gallon. Well, tomorrow, the House Select Committee investigating the deadly Capitol attack holds its latest public hearing. Tuesday's hearing is expected to feature testimony from a former spokesman from the extremist group The Oath Keepers and Donald Trump's White House counsel, Pat Cipollone. ABC's Justin Finch reports from Washington. Former White House Chief Strategist Steve Bannon says he is now ready to testify before the January 6th committee claiming Donald Trump has lifted the executive privilege order that had prevented him from complying with the select committee's subpoena. In letters obtained by ABC News, former President Trump says he's waiving executive privilege now because of how unfairly you and others have been treated. A letter from Bannon's lawyer adding he's ready to testify because circumstances have now changed. But Bannon's claim that he was ever covered by executive privilege has been called into question by Trump's lawyer. In an interview with Justice Department officials, Trump's attorney, Justin Clark, stated that at no point had Trump invoked executive privilege over Bannon's testimony, that information contradicting claims from Bannon and his defense team. All hell is going to break loose tomorrow. It's statements like this made on January 5th, one day before the Capitol insurrection, that the committee wants to question Bannon about. The it's panel wants to hear if Bannon knew anything about events planned for January 6th. Bannon's past refusal to cooperate with the committee now has him facing criminal charges for contempt of Congress. Bannon seeking to testify live, but committee members prefer to record their interviews. Anybody that wants to come in that knows information to talk to the select committee, we welcome them to do so. We welcome them to do so under oath. The committee also planning to present new videotape testimony from former White House counsel Pat Cipollone about what he saw and advised leading up to January 6th. Cipollone's testimony lasting some eight hours and more requests for testimony are coming into the committee. Like Steve Bannon, Oath Keepers founder Stuart Rhodes is offering to testify in a live public hearing, but that appears unlikely. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. The fire inside Yosemite National Park continues to burn and it has now grown to over 2,000 acres. Now a new concern is the health risk from smoke that's spreading across the state and the urgency to protect ancient trees. A growing fire has posed a threat to ancient trees known as giant sequoia trees in Yosemite. The park says it thinks mitigation efforts will protect the trees from major damage. Part of the reason for the trees surviving past fires they can handle smaller blazes, and the flames are also leading to other concerns, though. Today, the smoke could worsen air quality in the Bay Area. Well, one of the hottest workouts around might be also the easiest, walking. Why it's gaining traction and how you can get the most of your walk if you decide to lace up your sneakers and head out. 
And sizzling summer savings. A lot of stores are pushing sales over the next couple of days. So how do you know if you're actually getting a good deal? Tips after the break. Well, Amazon's Prime Day sales event starts tomorrow and other retailers are following suit. Some are even rolling out deals today. Target Deal Days is live now. Walmart is expected to match prices and Macy's Nordstrom and Best Buy all have sales of their own. So what's the best strategy if you're on the hunt for a good deal? It's important to approach Prime Day with a strategy when you are shopping. A lot of things are going to be on sale, but not every discount is as good as it's portrayed to be. All right, well, you can use historical price data tools like Honey or Camel, Camel, Camel to see if discounts are actually good deals. Google Shopping can also be used to compare prices against Amazon as retailers try to stay competitive. Now to the job market. Hiring in the U.S. still going strong with wages ticking upward. So if you're looking for a job, where will you find the best salaries and benefits right now? ABC's Ariel Reshef has more on how to cash in on the labor shortage. With an estimated 11.3 million job openings, or nearly two jobs available for every unemployed person, the job market is booming. The jobs market right now is in big favor of the people that are seeking jobs. And part of the reason why is because there's so many jobs to be had across all industries. Companies now offering attractive benefits and higher salaries to keep up in the competitive market. There's such a desperate need for jobs, specifically in the retail and service industry, that these industries are offering incentives like management training, very competitive salaries, increase in vacations, favorable hours. Service sector jobs in hospitality and healthcare, two more categories presenting great options for sizing up your salary amid a record number of openings. Companies like Walmart increasing pay for their drivers, with new drivers eligible to make up to $110,000 their first year. And as Americans take to the beach, the race is on to hire lifeguards. Cities from Phoenix to Austin to New York City offering higher pay and bonuses just for signing on. Considering a career in the trades, there are more opportunities there, too. Just ask Justin Nunn. He nearly tripled his prior salary from fixing smartphones to now working as an appliance repair technician. For me, I'm a father of three. I have a fourth on the way. Flexibility for me is key. So I like the challenging aspect, but I also like the freedom, also the pay. Well, if you can brave this heat, it's one of the simplest exercises you can do. And now it's the summer's hottest workout. Well, it's because it's hot. That's why it's the <laughs> hottest workout. So why is walking gaining so much traction? In the early part of the pandemic, it was one of the only things you could do. So if you're looking to boost your walks, what can you do now? All you really need are comfortable clothes and supportive shoes, right? And remember, easy does it. So if you're out of shape, start with short distances. Start with a stroll that feels comfortable. This is one simple activity that can allow us to recognize our own power, to have control over our own health to some extent. And I think that brings a lot of peace. Doctors said the benefits of a simple walk can come in more ways than we might realize, from helping reduce risks of heart disease, strokes and diabetes, to lowering blood pressure, to even boosting bone health to help prevent Osteoporosis. Yeah. Osteoporosis. That's it. it. Thank you. But there are other things. Now. If you're walking in this heat today, yeah. See, I think there the are other health issues. Now is just to stay inside. She said short walks, so couch, yeah. fridge, fridge, couch. <laughs> couch, yeah, just, dining table, dining table, couch. Go in a circle, count your steps. Steps count. Yeah, you can get like a thousand in somehow, <laughs> some way. Some way. Don't um. take hours. <laughs> 97 so far today. 82 was the low this morning. Yes, 82 degrees. That was a record high low temperature. The average is 94 and 74. We were eight degrees above average to start the day. So we were already uh, warming up. I mean, we started early. The record is 104. We'll likely beat that. That was set back in 1970. We're going to talk more about how hot it will be today and how hot tomorrow and our rain chances coming up.
Why does it feel like I fell asleep in San Antonio and woke up in Phoenix? I know. Or Vegas. It's even or worse. It's humidity, too. It's like, it's like, yeah, they don't have that to deal with. Yeah. Yeah, Ooh, it's dry heat there, good. right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh-huh. You know, it is already like 106 in Phoenix. So it's... Ew. Oh, well. Okay. okay. Well. So. It's a little better here. I do feel better, actually. Yeah, Thank thanks. you. Thank you for that. <laughs> uh, let's talk rainfall. Where are we at for the year? I, we've been stuck at this number for some time now. 5.11 inches. That is it for the year, okay? We can sometimes get that one event, but that is all we have so far. We are now over a foot below average. Del Rio is nearly seven inches below average. They haven't even gotten three inches of rain yet. Austin was doing pretty well for a while, but even they are now below average. And uh, temperatures this morning, I, I mentioned this, and uh, we were uh, down to 82 this morning, which was uh, a record for the warmest low temperature that we've seen actually since 2011. We haven't seen a morning low that warm. 82 degrees to start the day. Now I pointed out we've got some clouds here in the distance. You're starting to see more pop up here. So that tells me we're starting to get some of those clouds. It'll take some time, but they'll start to build. And eventually, like yesterday, we should start to get some showers and storms by the afternoon. But before that happens, temperatures are going to be racing upwards. 97 degrees at the airport right now. Dew point is at 67. It feels like 101 already. 97 at Bernie Station, 98 in Kerrville, 99 Bandera, 98 Hondo. You see the feels like numbers in yellow there, up above 100 just about everywhere. So the heat index is only going to get worse. And we forecast. We're forecasting high temperatures around 107 here today, 108 Divine, 105 Honda. We mentioned earlier, you see some of these 80s here because the computer model thinks we will get some cooling showers and storms. But everybody, even Bernie, Fair Oaks Ranch, Canyon Lake, you'll be above 100 until we can get some of those showers and storms going. And as we look at the satellite picture, there we go. Clouds starting to get a little thicker up there around Fredericksburg. Kerrville starting to see some of the clouds, and we're seeing a few develop even here around uh, northern parts of Bear County. And the forecast does call for that development. I'd say between 3, 5 o'clock, we'll start to see some showers and storms pop up. Like yesterday, we're not looking for a lot of severe weather, but there could be some gusty winds, some brief heavy rain with some of this activity, and then it probably dies down by 8 o'clock. Tomorrow, I think we see a pretty similar setup. More showers and storms by the afternoon. It's going to be another hot day, but the potential to cool down with some rain, hopefully, by the afternoon and evening hours. Here's the big picture, and you see some rain down there from Florida over to New Orleans. That's part of some tropical moisture that uh, Hurricane Center is watching. There's about a 30% chance of development down there. Probably won't bring us much, though. You see some rain across the northern tier of states. And we mentioned Phoenix. It's 106 there, so it, it could be worse. 99 in Vegas, but we've got plenty of 90s here over Texas at this hour. And the forecast calls for high pressure to continue to build probably shifting west just a little bit and i mentioned that area of low pressure if it does develop into something tropical looks like it drifts in around louisiana probably keeps a lot of the moisture east of us but that high pressure keeps us toasty next few days 104 tuesday 103 wednesday there are some small rain chances there 20 percent chance on thursday 99 100 friday just a small chance and we're looking at mainly triple digits here almost across the board with the exception of Thursday. We'll be right back. A Massachusetts woman screaming her head off as people in stitches. ABC or CNN's Jeannie Most reports it's all because of a chipmunk. A chipmunk, a dog and a screamer combined to make a video go viral. I know I'm loud, I know I'm obnoxious, and but it, I'm really embarrassed because my neighbors almost called the cops. They thought there was a murder being committed. But it was a rescue being committed when a chipmunk got trapped between the screen and the glass at Ashley Karen's Massachusetts home. Listen, let's make a deal, baby. I'm gonna safely get you out. I'm gonna open this and you just scurry right out there back to your happy, whimsical life. Negotiating with a chipmunk earned Ashley the whimsical nickname, Chipmunk Whisperer. She warned her kids in the other room. Okay, just stay in there. Okay, if I scream, everything is fine. <laughs> oh, 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 he's just coming down with it. Oh, maybe that's better. Oh, no. Okay, okay, you were right the first time. Nope, that way. No! Ash 
country was screaming bloody murder, but... The chipmunk lived. It turns out Ashley's Alaskan Malamute named Boss carried the chipmunk to the balcony as Ashley kept yelling, drop it. I think he put two and two together with my screams <laughs> and was like, maybe I should just let this little guy go. <laughs> Aside from the screaming, everyone's favorite part was this line. Okay, if I scream, everything is fine. Somebody said, I want that as a shirt. <laughs> Are you going to do it? I've been lying. I'm but in the end, she did scream, and it was okay. Though maybe not music to the ears of this chipmunk. No! Genie Mouse, CNN, New York. Oh my gosh. If I scream, everything is fine. She can make a lot of money off some t-shirts for that. She really could. I mean, All she right. should capitalize while she can. We're screaming for joy. Oh, Jen and Fiona. Jen and Fiona are, are here. together. Look at that. <laughs> It's a happy Monday, right? <laughs> Fun packed show, too. Yes, and you know what? We're helping you beat the heat today with some great summer food, and we're starting with some barbecue. Yes, Chef Wathi, co owner of Rock Quarry Barbecue, is here, and you're going to show us what makes your barbecue stand out. There's a reason. I know Fiona had line ready, right? That's right. Okay, uh, go ahead and show them some leg. I'm going to show <laughs> you some give leg. Them what they want. If you buy a turkey leg from Rock Quarry Barbecue and it doesn't do this, it's yours for free. Okay. Oh, look right. how much that just fell right off the bone. We're going to show you what, to, what we're going to do with that. Mm -hmm. Also, it's a money-saving Monday. Oh, yes, it is. And this week, it's all about the fun things you can do around town for free. We're talking like seeing free movies, mm. and we'll fill you in on some more family yes, fun you can have. Geez. That won't cost you a thing. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yes, and also to cool off in the summer, what's better than some delicious lemonade? Desiree is here, and you have... Hey guys. I have two of our drinks here. I have a passion fruit and I have a strawberries and cream here. And I'm just going to show you how to take out your cocktail skills here. And it's all on the wrist from here. Shake it, shake it, shake it, baby. Oh, yes. All right. She's going to show off some more of those refreshing made to order drinks. Yeah. All right. So, record breaking heat, you know, possible again today. It's hot out there, folks. We know that. Yeah. So, cold treats are one way to cool down. Yeah. So, snow cone mm -hmm. or ice cream. We want to know what's your go to. Let us like know both. at SA Live KSAT <laughs> on Facebook and Twitter. All right. Okay, we're up to 99 now, 107 this afternoon at 20%. Any of these uh, downpours affect you. Keep that KSAT weather app handy. We'll let you know. Of course, Big story next few days will be the heat. Won't let up. Fiona had this thing all covered today, so it's Monday and no better way to start. Today on SA Live, it's a money-saving Monday. We're going to tell you how you can catch some free money. Rocky Bar, like, what's going on out there, right? Somebody Why tried are to they letting those things sit in the sun? <laughs> yes. Yes, so we want to know, what is your go-to? Is it the snow cone, mm -hmm. uh, or is it the ice cream cone? cone? What do you like, Fiona? Ice cream cone. Yeah. And I'll eat it fast. <laughs> I like both. You know, put the ice cream in the raspa there and enjoy. Yes, let us know on our pages, our Facebook and Twitter. We may share your answers a little later in the show. All right. Well, a local family's love for barbecue ignited a brand new business. And guess what? One taste and you're going to be hooked. Ooh, I'm excited. Chef Wathi, co-owner of Rock Quarry Barbecue, is here to show us some fun ways to make and eat and enjoy your barbecue. Welcome. That's yes. right. How y'all doing? All right. Well, I mean, we love you because you have brought a <laughs> great food for us today right yes. delicious food what'd you bring i brought you ribs brisket chicken and sausage and turkey legs for our loaded nachos it's the way to our heart <laughs> Good. We're very excited, and it smells amazing if only it was smell vision right <laughs> so we're going to start with the loaded baked potato yes so tell me what to do so I'll what you're going to your do is you're going to make an incision here across okay, the potato okay. now we're going to kind of widen it out smash it through Oh, there we go. Yeah. You're going to take this instrument and you're going to kind of carve into it. How heavy is that potato? 
It's that looks, that's a good question. Like I, I, I didn't weigh it, but it's a, it's a decent sized potato. Baked potato. Yes, right. it is. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add some butter. Okay, butter. Okay, you always have to have your butter. Do you have a favorite topping on your loaded? Probably the brisket. Uh, it's the go-to. The brisket is really good. After the butter? After the butter, you're going to add some queso. Yes, Fiona, please. That was my one job. Hold on. <laughs> Here we go. Ooh, right there. That's better great. With Kessel, right? Okay. Everything's mm -hmm. better with Kessel. Okay. Now we're going to add some bacon bits. All right. My hands are clean, y'all. I will be eating this. <laughs> All right. Now we're going to add the brisket. That's a quarter pound of brisket. All of it. All of it. That's good. What's, is there's no easy way to do Here this. You. Right? Okay. There's no easy way to do it. Here we go. Now is this one of the top sellers? Thanks, yes. Fiona. You're you welcome. Got the You're welcome. Here, hold on. We're, we're, we're gonna tuck this in for the night. Okay. Here we go. There we go. Oh yes. Mm -hmm. I know. Our mamas are in charge. There you go. All right. Nice and packed. Yes. Okay. So what we're gonna do next is we are going to add oh, the pico so de gallo. Pico de gallo. Pico de gallo. All of it. Yeah. You can add about half of that. Oh, sorry. All right. Mm -hmm. We're not holding back here. No, no we're, we're not. not supposed to. There you go. Okay. Now you're gonna add some French onion. Still going. Okay. Oh, it's loaded. Yes. Oh, oh wow, we should have. Yeah. Kidding. Right. Like now you're going to add your sour more. cream. Sour cream. Oh, you're gonna come across in, <laughs> in lines. We had a little incident <laughs> earlier. See. Just like that. Okay. And that is Rock Quarry's loaded baked potato. Oh, look at that. Right. That is no joke. I'm gonna dig it's it. It's loaded. But that's gotta be pretty popular. Is that it, one of the it, more popular? It, it is things? one of our more popular things. Okay. That's amazing. Now, Fiona, mm -hmm. I'm excited to see what you're gonna build. Yes. All right. So that's what's another way to enjoy your barbecue. Another way to enjoy our barbecue is with the loaded nachos. Mm -hmm. uh, today's loaded nachos are going to be uh, turkey leg loaded nacho. Okay. So again, we're going to start with the queso. Okay. So I'm going to put it right here on the nachos. You're going to put it right over the nachos. Okay. Get, I should be helping you. Sorry get you a, ni a nice good okay. spread. <laughs> Here we go. So that's Make one. Sure we, you said about two, right? Yes, about two. All right. We, we don't we like dry chips. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know what? I'm just going to go with a little there you go. more. You know, because yes. this is what we train for. Okay, okay. so now we're going to add the turkey. Now add That's the, the turkey, turkey leg that we just pulled. Okay. And so you can top the lo uh, loaded nachos with what besides turkey? Uh, brisket, mm -hmm. sausage, ribs, mm -hmm. pulled pork, mm -hmm. or chicken. Okay. Uh, the choice is yours. I don't think I've ever tried nachos with the turkey leg meat. It's something How'd special. How did you come up with these ideas? Oh, we like to eat, and uh, we've been cooking for many years, so we just sit back at home and think of ways we can make food better. You're fitting right in here. <laughs> okay. You're best buddy here. Right, okay, now. so now we're going to add the pico de gallo. Okay. That's right on top. There we go. And you're located at the market there also at Bandera, correct? Bandera yes. Point, is that right? Bandera. Mm -hmm. We're right outside of 1604 in the Santicos parking lot. Um, okay. We're there as well. Okay, and then I'm going to top it off with... Uh oh. That's all, it's all right. <laughs> well, there's always a chance mm -hmm. for that to happen. There. And go. there we go. Yes. And that is Rock Quarry's barbecue's uh, loaded nachos. Look at okay, that, that right there. That's amazing. Yes. I'm going to move this over here. Yes. Okay. And then uh, now on to the sandwich. signature mm -hmm. sandwich. We can't say the name, but I will say if you go look on the menu, you'll know the name because it'll pop right out at you. And we're going to let right. you do that. So we're going to call it that sandwich today. And if you want this sandwich, all you got to do is come and see it. Uh oh, this ain't working. Well, it's taking a cue from the sour yeah, cream. Yeah. It is. So what we're going to do is we're going to have to yes. improvise. Yes. Okay. There we go. This is a homemade barbecue. Yes, this is a homemade like barbecue it. sauce. It is a Dr. Pepper barbecue sauce. Ooh. Really? my attention. Yeah. And so what we're going to do is we're going to add a link of sausage. And so what makes this sandwich amazing? You're going to see in a okay. second. <laughs> Because you have to be a Dr. Pepper yeah. sauce. So it takes a, um, a full link of sausage, uh -huh. six ounces, a uh, quarter, I mean, I'm sorry, a quarter pound of brisket. She's going to go there. Yes, do it. Yes. <laughs> yes. It is going to take no. six ounces Four? of yeah. jalapeno okay. mac and cheese. How does one even start to eat that? Well, that's why what it's got do? that special name. <laughs> To find out and if you want to find out the name, you got to come yes. see us. Yes. So then it takes pickles and onions as well, mm -hmm. which we have here. Keep going. Mm -hmm. Yes. And it's topped off, excuse me, with oh. pico de gallo. Of course. Yum. It's like a tower. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Yeah, there's going to be no graceful way to, to eat that. 
And this sandwich is my signature sandwich. My wife is the one that actually came up with this. She did? Yes. Oh, and uh, nice. I told her I was hungry. She made me a sandwich. This is a sandwich. <laughs> they went on the menu the next day. They went on the menu the next day. I love it. Yes. <laughs> Recipes, and that's right? how we Sometimes. get the best recipes. Oh, yes, right. I couldn't. I, and I couldn't do this without her. So, yeah. you know, yes. this is so what we're. So obviously, your family enjoys this. There's a passion. Yes, this right, is what we do. Okay. Yep, and that is the signature sandwich. Tell folks how they can sample your food. You can come see us at the Bandera Market. Uh, we're located right outside of 1604 in the Santicos parking lot, and you can also come see us at the Eisenhower Market on Eisenhower Road. And I'm located there as well. Mm -hmm. um, we are there Wednesday through Sunday. Jen, and, that was, on that and that's the one right there. <laughs> that, is. that was delicious. I don't know. I have to feel no, right. no, again, no great way to do that, but that was a valiant yeah, effort. That's, right, that's a sloppy eat right there. But it's good. Barbecue. All you have to do is head to our website, salive.com, and click on the as seen on SA Live tab. All right. Spreading joy through mm -hmm. art. That's what one 11 year old girl is all about. Yes, excuse me. No again. Worries. Yes, from paying tribute to shooting victims in Parkland, Florida, to encouraging first responders during the pandemic, this little girl is all about spreading kindness and joy, and now she's spreading sunshine to Yvalde. Take a look. We always want to spread kindness to change the world because you never know that something that you can do that starts off really small, if you keep making it bigger and bigger, it can really change the world. A.L. Morgan Stern is on a mission to change the world through her art, on chairs she calls sunny seats. I was in Parkland when the tragedy happened and I I wanted to like help. So I painted 17 chairs for the 17 lives that were lost. So I had to ask my mom, can you please get me 17 wooden chairs so I can paint them? Because I wanted to help out. Morgan Stern was just six years old when the tragic shooting happened in Parkland, Florida. Still, she was inspired to paint these chairs. They have since been on display at different locations throughout Florida. So they were in a lot of places and I really, I was just like, I just wanted to really help out. Did that kind of encourage you to want to keep doing stuff like this? Yes, definitely. I always love to help out and I always love to spread kindness around the whole world. Now, A.L. is gifting a sunny seat to the city of Uvalde. After hearing about the tragedy, she was inspired to paint this bench, which will be delivered to City Hall this week. So, I incorporated my sunny seats that I did for the 17 lives that were lost at the Parkland tragedy, and I incorporated it and I made a sunny bench, and it was to help Uvalde, and I really wanted to spread love and light to their community. Through the darkness, A.L. hopes she can help shine light and love for the city of Uvalde, a city we all continue to embrace in our hearts. I always try and make these posts, but if even if not everyone enjoys them, always there's someone in the world that always gets impacted by it or enjoys and like understands it and gets inspired by it. And that inspiration is what Ayel hopes to continue to give to strangers through her art. She also has an Instagram page that you can follow for more positivity she hopes to continue to share with the world. And if you put your heart and soul into doing kind things, then not only will your heart be full, but so will the world's heart. AL also made Kepi bands for first responders during the pandemic. So again, her goal is just to continue to spread kindness. Love it. All right, well, if you'd like to follow her on Instagram, just head on over to our website, salive.com, and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab, or just scan that QR code on your screen. All right, still ahead on the show, when life gives you lemons, you call the Lemon Girls, where you can find these lemonade aficionados, and we try some of the different flavors they offer. But first, we're starting a brand new segment to help us all save a little bit of cash. It's Money Saving Monday. This week, it's all about fun things to do around town that won't cost a lot, and a lot of them are even free. It's next on SA Live. 